Hello busy people, welcome to my podcast, The Booklet. This podcast is an easy way to digest great ideas from the books you never had the time to read. I have a few interesting segments. Short summary, my favorite quote, book summary through my lens, a review of the book, what else you can learn, who would I recommend this book to? I hope you enjoy this podcast. Feel free to leave feedback. Let's get to it. Today's book is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fork. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fork does away with positive psychology craze to instead give you a stoic, no bullshit approach to living a life that might not always be happy but meaningful and centered only around what's important to you. My favorite quote from the author Mark Manson Who you are is defined by what you're willing to struggle for. For as much as I love positive psychology, sometimes it just doesn't work even for me. There's another mode that might sound odd but still works, which is styling. You know how you have occasional week where it's literally just grinding. Even if you usually like your job, nothing exciting happens for a few days. You have a lot of deadlines and you just toil away to get it done. It's the kind of mode I'm in right now and weirdly it's kind of satisfying. Probably because it feels liberating not to have to ooze happy vibes all the time. Blogging demigod Mark Manson has coined a better phrase for this mode of operation. The subtle art of not giving a fork. His first proper book, this instant New York Times bestseller, is a no bullshit self-help book for people who usually hate self-help. Mark gets that life has become overwhelming and the only way to find our center around the things that really matter to us is to not give a fork about anything else. Here are my three favorite lessons from the book. 1. Values you can't control are bad values to follow. 2. Don't believe you know anything with certainty. for it keeps you from improving 3 trying to leave a legacy might ruin your life the trick of not giving a fork about most things is that you'll be able to give one about when it really matters let's see how you can get a bit closer to that lesson 1 only hold values you control Mark is a very stoic guy and it shines through his writing and advice a common idea of stoicism is to focus only on the things you can control this is easy enough to understand and implement when it comes to your actions but it can be applied to more intangible aspects of your life as well take your values for example I know it's hard to put them into words but if you try to describe yourself in say three adjectives you already have a good idea of which values most dictate your life let's say you choose the words honest punctual and popular here's where mark makes an interesting remark only choose to have values you can control Most of us give up some of our ideals as we grow up. Try to have a career and make money. While that's just a part of real life, it's important you don't hand off the steering wheel altogether. Values you don't control are bad because they'll be a constant source of unnecessary suffering in our life. 
when we look at the three words that we just mentioned honesty is 100% in your control only you know how honest you are but no one else need to punctuality is partially in your control if you always leave with plenty of buffer time you can compensate for most potential obstacles popularity however is totally out of your grasp sure you can be you can be very nice and friendly to everyone but you can't control other people's opinions some will always hate you no matter what you do therefore popularity isn't the best value to focus on and you could try replacing it with one more controllable such as kindness lesson 2 certainty hampers growth what a great principle this distilled into just three words certainty hampers growth imagine you could choose between two modes of moving through the world one in which you think everything you know is 100% true and one in which you think nothing you know is 100% true both are stressful but which one do you think would help you make better better decisions the latter of course while there's some middle ground to be found here rejecting the idea that you know anything for sure is a great base to start learning from this is true for discovering factual knowledge such as using the scientific method to build business hypothesis which helps arrive at better conclusions but it is also true for gaining conceptual knowledge the second kind is more implicit knowledge about relationships between various entities let's take your place in the social hierarchy at school for example if you are convinced you are ugly you'll be sad a lot but if you notice that you get lots of compliments at school people call you charming and someone have a crush on you that's evidence your brain is playing you with false certainty if you allow yourself to have a little doubt you can then disapprove this limiting belief you hold about yourself lesson 3 don't obsess about leaving a legacy here is an uncomfortable but important reminder you are going to die one day we all are whether whether we admit or not whether the time comes closer we are all scared that's why many of us want to leave a legacy myself included however mark says that that might ruin our short amount of precious time here on earth the more we are driven to build a great body of work the more start chasing fame working too much and focusing on the future what if instead we just try to be useful in the present we could still help a ton of people enjoy our days and fully be here while we are here mark's stance is clear find ways to bring yourself your loved ones and the people you meet join the nav and let the legacy part take care of, take care of itself my review of the book mark's writing is funny and to the point no bullshit lot of curse words but lots of insights too It's a medium long book with just over 200 pages but light in the terms of how fast you get there because Mark uses many examples What else can you learn from the blinks 1 The weird paradox that surrounds finding happiness in your life 2 
a subtle identity problem all advertising causes in us. 3. Why do something is a great principle to live by. 4. How you are doing others a favor when you say no to them. Who would I recommend the subtle art of not giving a fork? The 21 year old software engineer who thinks about quitting his first job after six months because it's not fun anymore. The 45 year old fighter pilot who couldn't care less about self-help and anyone who hopes to become a mega successful artist. This is about the book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fork. If you like the podcast, please like, share and subscribe. I'm leaving the link to buy the book in the description. Have a good day and a wonderful life. Until next time.